Uh, incidentally, I might like to add that uh, two of the universities, uh, the Karnataka Technical University, and today morning I talked to uh, uh, Rajiv Gandhi Pradhyogikit Dalit in Madhya Pradesh. They are both ready to adopt the blended MOOCs model uh, of IIT Bombay. I have not been able to talk to Gujarat Technical University people. They were here. Ah, wonderful, sir. Thank you. Okay, good, good. We'll de deliberate upon it later. Let me invite uh, Professor Kannan Maldgalya, who has been the coordinator of all national mission projects here. Uh, and he will uh, try to highlight the achievements of the various national mission projects outside IIT Bombay. We'll talk post-lunch of the projects that are being done in IIT. Uh, Kannan, all yours. All right, this is, uh, first of all, welcome once again. Uh, good afternoon. And it is going to be the most difficult session because uh, uh, this session is between you and lunch, between us and lunch. And uh, there are a lot of things that uh, many experts have come from various parts of the country to explain the, some of the projects that are happening at, uh, through NME ICT. Before I get started, uh, I want to once again emphasize the working papers that are in your bag. Um, we want you to um, go through that and select one or two groups in which you want to work. In fact, uh, Mr. Pawan Agrawal keeps emphasizing that the main reason why we are organizing this workshop is to come up with some recommendations in the afternoon and to present them tomorrow. So I would like you to uh, go through this. Uh, by 4 o'clock, you have to give that feedback. At 4.15, we will start that session. I thought I would take one minute to explain that. Um, so how are we going to do this session? Because there are five talks here. Uh, the first one is by uh, on NPTEL by Professor Barney Bhattacharya from IIT Karakpur. Uh, and then we have seven minutes each for each of the talks. Uh, in fact, I would like to call this as uh, demos. Um, and the details will be through the stalls, banners, uh, posters, and brochures, and so on. The second one will be by Professor Santosh Narona. Uh, uh, he will talk about virtual labs. Then um, Kamal uh, will uh, give a demo of AVU. ERP will be given by uh, NK Singh from IIT Kanpur. And Pedagogy will conclude that session with uh, Professor A.K. Ra's, A.K. Ray's presentation on uh, pedagogy. So we expect it will take about uh, 40 minutes. We will have seven minutes to give the presentation uh, or the demo. There will be one minute for uh, answering question and answers. During the time, I would request the next speaker to come and set up there so that we don't waste that one minute time also. During that one, one minute, this uh, previous presenter can actually answer questions. So, uh, Professor Bani Bhattacharya. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my presentation is on <coughs> NPTEL, which you already, most of you know a lot about NPTEL. NPTEL stands for National Program for Technology Enhanced Learning. It was, the first phase was started in around 2003, and the second phase it started in 2007. It, it will conclude in March this year. So we would be concluding both phases of NPTEL successfully and creating more courses than we originally thought we would. NPTEL, the precursor of NPTEL was a program of campus distance education program called LNET 3L, launched by IIT Kharagpur, Professor A.K. Ray and myself were leading the program. And based on that, the NPTEL program was conceived. So NPTEL, the reason for having NPTEL, starting NPTEL was to bring up the standard of engineering education in the country. As we all know, there are diverse colleges with diverse standards of education in the whole country. So we thought that if we recorded lectures, video lectures, and also made web courses on the different topics in engineering education by the renowned teachers, good teachers, and distributed them to the colleges, then the teachers would look at these courses and get educated not only on the domain knowledge on the area, but also on the methodology of teaching. As a consequence, the standard of education in the colleges would improve. So this was the reason for having NPTEL, starting NPTEL in the first place. But when we launched NPTEL, we found that more than the teachers, students themselves are using the courses. So, 
now we have students, teachers as well as professionals using NPTEL courses. Some uh, data and some uh, idea about the NPTEL courses. NPTEL the technology is already available and will only improve. Communication bandwidth and computer power per in unit cost will con continue to increase. Improvement in quality of professionals emerging from the universities. That is one of the areas that is very important for us. It offers opportunities for cross-disciplinary learning. So, cross-disciplinary learning, interdisciplinary learning is another area which is important. While uh, professionals can update their knowledge while being on the job and the industry academia but partnership can be en enhanced through the NPTEL program. So, these are the opportunities that are provided by the NPTEL program. This is a screenshot of the NPTEL uh, website. So, this shows you how the NPTEL website looks. The uh, addresses are given below NPTEL IITM.ac.in and uh, uh, YouTube.com. So, these are the sites where you can go and see the NPTEL site. These are the course wise, institute wise distribution of courses. ISC Bangalore video courses 64, web courses 52. So, we find that basically IIT Kanpur, IIT Kharagpur and IIT Madras have contributed most to the NPTEL courses as of now. So, total of 1,231 1, courses have been completed as of now. Uh, most, some of them are on the web, most of them are on the web or on the um, server and some of them are being reviewed. The NPTEL courses were uh, decided that NPTEL courses would have four quadrants. One quadrant, the main quadrant, quadrant would be the content, the content of the course, the basic uh, thing that is included in the course, the area. Animations and visuals, illustrations, video clips, this would be the second quadrant. The third quadrant would be supplementary reading, uh, websites, resources which the student would be uh, guide, guided to. These are, this is, would be the third quadrant. And the fourth quadrant would be problems, quizzes, assignments that would be in embedded within the courses. So, each course would have all four com components. So, it would not be just an e-book or a, just a video lecture, but would have all these quadrants embedded in it. Each course would provide contents for 40 or more one hour lecture. So, each course would be having at minimum 40 one hour lectures. It would, the uh, syllabus of the courses would be basically the IIT syllabus plus the syllabus of other basic universities um, would be in, included, was included like Anna University, JNQ, Hyderabad, Bel BTU, Belgaum and these co uh, courses were modularized for adoption. So, it was in a modular form. Project deliverables at the end of 2013, more than 900 engineering science and management courses with about half of them in video format. So, courses were made, each course was made both in the video format as well as in the web format, because each format has its own advantage. Video format has certain advantages, web format has certain advantages. So, a course like digital signal processing for example, would have a video course and there would be a web course on digital signal processing also. Branches and levels covered most engineering disciplines at UG level and many electives for PG level. Basic sciences, PG level and management or MBA program. Broadcast quality videos and compressed formats, <coughs> modular courses, courses were in a modular format so that each mod, uh, if a course becomes uh, outdated, a module can be taken out, another module can be in, in embedded so that it was in a module, modular format. Text and transcription. So, transcription of in a textual format was available, subtitling for all video courses. Translation of spoken text into Hindi and other regional languages, ask a question by the readers and bookmarks. These were the things that were thought to be done within 2013 and most of them have been achieved. Other special features were all videos in multiple download formats were available and streaming formats all web based courses with additional learning and support materials, enabling institutions to acquire NPTEL courses and use them freely. So, NPTEL courses were given free of cost to all institutions and now even to all private industries. Conduct many workshops, we have conducted each IIT or each uh, institution involved in NPTEL have conducted many workshops, awareness workshops among 
teachers and students and uh, discipline related workshops also. Encouraging course, course creation by partners other than seven IITs and IISC. So, initially the IITs and IISC were the institutions that were doing the courses, but now other institutions have been included in making the courses. Encouraging collaborators to add value by adding a quadrant of learning. So, sometimes sometimes a quadrant is missing, sometimes a, um, animation or graphics portion is missing or a assignment or quiz portion is missing. So, these can be added by other institutions also. Include. So, P, uh, these are the access things for NPTEL. Videos are available on these area, this website, social educational networking, ac accessing NPTEL through videos, courses, videos, call it through intranet sites, mirror site options and awareness workshops, course specific and faculty centric workshops. Okay. Okay, thank you. Oh, thank you. So next we will have uh, Professor Santosh Narana, he is uh, my colleague at IIT Bombay. Uh, Professor Ranjan Bose of uh, IIT Delhi uh, is coordinating this work. In fact, I forgot to tell that NPTEL work is coordinated by Professor uh, Mangal Sundar at IIT Madras. Professor Santosh Narana. Thank you. So I would like to briefly discuss the activities happening uh, nationwide on the development of virtual labs. Uh, this is an activity as was uh, pointed out by Professor Kandan, coordinated by IIT Delhi. Uh, the director of IIT Delhi is the lead uh, investigator and uh, Professor Ranjan Bose uh, coordinates. Um, the motivation for this uh, is uh, relatively simple. Um, physical distances limit uh, the performance of uh, experiments and um, given that most lab infrastructure is expensive, it is impossible to uh, uh, share and utilize this efficiently. For example, the labs at IIT Bombay typically tend to be used on the afternoons for about 3 hours a day and remain idle the rest of the day. And the attempt essentially is to see whether we can get such infrastructure usable round the clock uh, and efficiently by a large number of students at remote locations. Uh, and, and a further aspect of this is as we start uh, evolving better lab infrastructure, when we develop quality infrastructure, can we then go about sharing these resources efficiently. So the basic idea is that um, we need physical labs or simulators which are located remotely and then accessed through the internet by several remote users. And the formal objectives that the virtual labs uh, scheme uh, uh, for an MEICT uh, uh, mandated us was to come up with uh, uh, mechanisms for remote access to labs in various disciplines of science and engineering. And then to come up with a learning management system to facilitate uh, deployment of such uh, lab uh, equipments and to enrich these with web resources, video lectures, animated demonstrations and evaluation uh, methodologies. And also to try and uh, avail, ma make these available to students so they could learn at their own pace towards ultimately arousing their curiosity. And we have heard discussions of these earlier in the morning. Uh, the original intent was for the users for virtual labs to primarily be college students and teacher and instructors, but it's curious, we're seeing that a number of uh, high school students uh, are interested in uh, uh, availing of these resources. And some of the simulators that have been developed are now so rich in terms of features that uh, we are looking at researchers trying to access some of these in various institutes. Uh, there are six, uh, sorry, there are 12 uh, participating institutes involved in uh, developing content. Uh, Delhi takes the lead. And uh, we all have now a single common front end through which uh, we all go, the vlab.co.in site. Uh, there has been, uh, over the last three years, attempts at uh, focus development on three categories of labs which are relevant to uh, technical universities. Uh, these primarily are modeling and simulation based. And the point here is that uh, things are done via simulators. They scale very well with the uh, uh, deployment of uh, larger servers uh, in, in terms of numbers as farms. But then in terms of bringing in more uh, realism into the deployment of uh, uh, lab experience, uh, we need to make some of these uh, measurements based. And so there are measurement based labs where the data is collected from uh, real hardware and then deployed uh, via software uh, approaches towards uh, a large number of students. And the third category is the hardest to uh, uh, enable, which is a remote triggered uh, piece of hardware. Now, um, the, uh, the project status for virtual labs is as follows. Um, there was an initial pilot phase where proof of concept was to be expected and 10 labs were to be developed. Each lab was supposed to have about uh, 10 experiments. Uh, 
pretty much matching uh, 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 semester long activity uh, in a particular department. It turns out that we managed to put together 23 labs, following which uh, we went into a main phase uh, where we were uh, required to come up with 80 simulation based labs and 85 labs were developed and uh, released and launched by uh, the HRM minister in 2012. And subsequently, there has been uh, an effort to uh, look at development of uh, uh, remote triggered labs and uh, there are 35 labs which are in various stages of development uh, around the country at this stage. Uh, they span a large number of uh, disciplines, uh, the various engineering departments uh, uh, are represented, but also uh, life sciences. Um, a typical uh, experience with uh, a simulation lab would be for a student to go, for example, to a chemical engineering uh, 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 lab where he has access to several experiments and uh, this would happen via a login mechanism, a standard login mechanism and then the student gets to see the various uh, objectives, understand the theory in detail, even look at uh, videos of the actual experiment being done uh, at, at a particular location. In this case, this was done at IIT itself. Uh, gets to uh, take uh, a pre-viva and um, based on the performance on the pre-viva is uh, allowed to proceed on to the actual uh, uh, simulator and uh, proceeds to the simulator at each point uh, is forced to uh, come up with uh, logical uh, choices for various settings and then uh, is evaluated on the spot as to the validity of those uh, uh, settings. Um, the users also requested uh, to provide feedback so that we end up enriching this whole experience. Um, a large number of those labs have been uh, developed as I said. Now in terms of remote triggering, uh, there have been uh, several attempts at coming up with uh, devices which are relatively foolproof in terms of uh, making these available to people at distant locations. You've got to realize that if somebody tries uh, a relatively uh, uh, abnormal setting that uh, this potentially could uh, cause a nice disaster in one of our labs here in terms of hardware blowing up. So uh, the safety issues with remote triggered labs have been addressed uh, to a large extent now in terms of coming up with safeguards. But uh, they bring in this rea realism that uh, certain engineering disciplines mandate, which is that uh, you can't always simulate with the very simple uh, uh, pieces of software what is a highly non-linear or non-ideal process. So we've got uh, this particular device that's available uh, in our stalls for further uh, investigation. I would encourage you all to visit uh, our stall a little later. So in this case, the student is supposed to register uh, and uh, log in and then uh, once a connection is made, okay, they proceed to execute some of the own code that they have in, in what is, a, uh, as it turns out, an experiment in process control. So I'll skip to all of this for lack of time. In terms of the impact that we have had, we've held field trials in several colleges at this stage and um, uh, we have approximately 1,000 faculty members who have been trained in the deployment of these labs and we're holding workshops all over the place uh, as of now. And uh, we are going uh, essentially uh, into a mode where uh, given that we have got tremendous feedback from students and faculty that we want a format where we interact with the, the various technical universities in terms of uh, formulating uh, uh, an ecosystem where uh, the uh, various colleges serve as nodal centers where we can hold workshops, train uh, uh, the, the local uh, instructors and uh, essentially enable uh, them towards further reaching out to uh, the colleges in their neighborhood. So thank you. You'll find more details at the stall and, and at this particular website. Thank you, um, Sorry if uh, I'm being extremely rude to the speakers, but um, um, more details are available in the stalls and you will have a chance to visit these and you'll be able to see them. So next one is um, A View by uh, uh, Professor Kamal Bijlani from Amruta University will be presenting. It is being used extensively in the 10,000 teacher training program. As a matter of fact, uh, I'm supposed to be the coordinator of this uh, project, uh, Talk to a Teacher project, of which IIT Bombay and Dayalbagh Universities University are also partners, and um, we are glad to have uh, Kamal. Good morning. Um, as uh, has already been mentioned, AVU is uh, probably being used by a lot of you here, and uh, so we'll uh, focus on the main things. AVU is a e-learning platform. Um, that we have as part of the mission and uh, it is, can be used for classroom meetings and trainings. Um, currently actually there are classes as was mentioned uh, being done by the IITs right now and uh, these are uh, some of the classes which uh, you know we have a short uh, recording for. So here for example you are seeing the class actually 
and uh, these are recordings of live classes that are done uh, from IITs to 3,000 students at 100 colleges live. So this is going on right now, five hours a day, Monday through Friday. Uh, and they are using AVU for this live uh, classes at various places. So different models are being used. People are using chalk and board. People are using on the writing on the pa paper. People are uh, using different different models and uh, doing these live classes. This is part of uh, the Q Triple E that uh, was mentioned by a few personnel here. So these are the various, uh, and there are live interactions during these classes also. And uh, so here, what we are showing is that what AVU fundamentally is, is an online collaboration platform. So when the teacher changes the content, so if there is 3D content, the teacher changes the content, it changes everywhere simultaneously, instantly. So this is already working, and this is being used uh, for changing the content as you can see. So the, this gives you an overall picture of the major features of AVU. I won't go into each feature. Uh, at a very high level, you can see that uh, there is uh, audio video pro processing. It can be done such that you have different bandwidths available on the receiving end so that we can go to our rural areas and we can go high definition also simultaneously. We can have presentations, we can have whiteboards, we can have 3D models, interactive 3D models. And uh, this is one area in which I would like all our uh, knitters and uh, universities to participate in because at this point we are not using much multimedia content. So that is one area I think which we need serious development. So this is uh, 2D animations, and uh, we have a 2D animations here. So when I'm showing these, these are not just animations. They are collaborative in AVU. So you are at one node, you're running it, and 100 people are seeing the same thing live. And you are controlling it for everything. You can pause it, speak over it. Desktop sharing, uh, video sharing. You can take any video from YouTube or from your desk and share it with everyone. You can, we are uh, looking at small games and interactive things also right now. We have various ways of uh, live evaluation and feedback. So uh, that uh, user can do a hand raise so that the teacher knows there is a question. In fact, uh, what Dr. Fartak has done, we feel is a totally new paradigm shift in online classes. He has created classes of 10,000 people at a time, which is not heard of in the entire world, live. Because of that, at the same time, you have 10,000 people live. So our entire e-learning, this AVU, is being customized so that we can handle that kind of a class live. So we have sometimes 300 nodes logged in. And uh, you know, Mr. Sajjan here, and Kavita, and Mukta, all these people are giving us feedback as to how we should be customizing AVU, and we are doing that. So you know, you can have a hand raise, and there could be 300 people. We have another facility for asking questions. So all the questions are there in text form, and the people who are asking the questions can vote for them, so that you know what is the most popular question among the people. And that comes to the top automatically. So in other words, what we have here, we feel, is the birth of a totally new paradigm huge online classes. So we have uh, online tests and quizzes also to evaluate these students, and you can evaluate thousands of them at the same time. You can use tablets also as part of that. So each student here, for example, could be holding an Akash tablet, and then their quiz would be individually evaluated in this model. The entire session is recorded. It can be played back and edited. There can be webinars. You can set up your own classes, your own lectures, and your own your institution, basically. With AVU, for each institution, we are giving you, letting you do whatever you want. You can even set up your own servers. You can have online meetings uh, with many people at the same time. 
what we have accomplished so far is AVU is currently being used in 3500 colleges and 450 universities for classes and we have uh, currently put it on NKN and NIC networks that is almost complete now so that everyone will have access to it for classes and meetings. And there is a desktop version, Windows version and runs on all platforms. So we have uh, had the 10,000 uh, teacher class. We have these live videos that I showed you. We do a lot of research, product research in many areas. I won't go into that right now. Um, at uh, Amrita and with uh, bomb, uh, all the IITs to stay abreast of all the technologies and integrate them into this project. For example, in image recognition itself, we have biometric login. We are going to do semi-automatic attendance so that you will, if there are 100 nodes connected with 50 people each, in theory you have 5,000 people sitting there, but we will actually verify that through the camera. We will have a total people count. We will find out if you are sleeping or awake. <laughs> and whatever is written on the whiteboard will be converted automatically to text. We have heard of text to speech. We will also have text to sign language. We'll do a one minute demo and then we'll be done. Yes, start, sir. Start, start, Ramesh. Hello, everyone. My name is Ramesh Gunta. Today, we'll go through AVU demo by learning about four stroke engines. So, first, let's go to 3D model. Here, I can present, we can see the 3D model and I can rotate and you can see it from various angles. And you can see the various parts as well. Uh, camshaft, pistons, crankshaft, timing belt, etc. And you can play this model as well. And while it's playing, you can see how the whole parts and everything are moving. And not only that, I can also take the parts apart and then discuss them. For example, now I have taken the timing camshaft and we can see various cams and position in different angles. Now we can go back to the document sharing to learn about the four different strokes of a, of a IC engine. So here the first stroke is the intake stroke, <coughs> second stroke is a compression stroke where the mixture, fuel air mixture is compressed and the spark plug ignites them. And the third stroke is the power stroke where the combusted gases push the, push the piston down and generate the power. And the fourth stroke is the fourth stroke is the exhaust stroke where the gases go out of the cylinder. Now let's go to the whiteboard to understand how this power is generated. So here we are seeing the P by V uh, graph of the four different strokes and the power is generated in the, the, the generated power is equal to the area. Just show the last movie for 10 seconds, we are done, time is out. Equal to the area. So now let's see how the engine is assembled using a YouTube video. I'm sharing a YouTube video by Ford Motor Company. And here you can see that uh, the the engine head is getting assembled and the valves are coming in and uh, they are getting assembled. So this is, uh, this is how we can uh, teach complex uh, subjects through AVU in an engaging manner using various multimedia and uh, intention uh, models. Thank you very much, Ravish. So thank you very much. Uh, you know, this is one example of online collaboration using AVU. We'll, we'll see you at the store. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, apologies again. Okay. Uh, next one is uh, ERP, our uh, educational resources planning uh, project uh, coordinated by Professor Y.N. Singh of uh, IIT Kanpur. Unfortunately, he is unable to come here. Uh, so he has deputed his project engineer, Mr. N.K. Singh, uh, who is ready with this. Uh, and he'll give a brief presentation. So please do mention about the usage also. Thank you. So good afternoon, everyone. Now, be presenting the ERP, that is Educational Resource Planning. So what are components developed under that? First, we explain that. Then before that, we tell the objective. So the component developed under open source, so that no cost. And that is immediately, once it developed, be immediately uh, releases as soon as possible. That is our policy. So, the, and every component have a single sign-on. You want to come to the demo directly? Are you going to give a demo? Huh? We can give the demo online. So, 
in that case we need a network so that we can show because we have a live server for the national service so you connect that what we have uh, what we have utilized in the mou is this is a generic generic uh, uh, package which has been prepared now the state technical university along with netter will identify a local partner which will customize this package towards the needs of our state uh, colleges and the state technical university so that has been message so this is uh, this is only a generic package so we create a first website that is edrp portal all the application are listed there either you go with that or you directly connect with that particular application so this is the main home page and the url is 2021414028 this is easily accessible for everywhere and the first is the edrp portal so this is the portal here we all the component first is braspati this is the learning management system with that system you can upload the course content to the students you can take the online examination short quiz you can take the assignment you can discuss with the your teacher now second is the braspati general accounting system so all the complete accounting with your projects or your institute or university you can hold it there that is budget control system this and library management system there is a payroll system there is a purchase inventory control management system project management system election management system student e portfolio system some other component are not listed there so first we show the braspati how it look like so this is the first page for braspat system currently 230 institute are registered with this system they are using that system some are some are not so we will show how instructor part look like yes so all the parts first to the first part just just explain so the screen now third is so this is instructor how look like at the instructor end now we move till the other this is so this is the instructor end these things are available so you instructor can use it you can upload the marks student can see only own marks not the other student marks and this is this is accounting system and all the links will comes directly from the braspati learning management system so where we configure this can be connect from where so these are the accounting system here you can generate your own account chart of accounts so some samples accounts are there that are uh, supply provided by the mhrd so all these things will be there you can generate the balance sheets reports this type of report income expenditure statement even you can submit the entries and this is the now next is payroll system so we have again many other systems so last is directly reaches 
in election management system we conduct two elections for the IATK and MNI system all over the world election run 30 days and we get the correct results. Payroll system is, so how you contribute? You can provide the inputs for the update of designs. All the systems are multilingual as well as the multi institutional system. This is running in all Indian languages. That is, and you can log in in that system with your Google ID, Yahoo IDs, all the open IDs. You can connect or with the local authentication system, we have run the Braspati remote systems. So, all the applications should connect with that. Okay, and these thank are you. the important URLs, so you can get. And more detail you can find in our stall, where we provide the complete list of URLs. Okay, thank you, Mr. Singh. Um, so, we actually wanted to conclude this session with a very important talk, uh, a presentation of a very important project on pedagogy, uh, outcome-based uh, le learning instruction and things like that. So we have uh, Professor A.K. Ray and, uh, and uh, so Professor A.K. Ray uh, has been active in this uh, for many years, um, one used to be uh, the most important contributor to NPTEL. We saw that NPTEL's uh, cont contribution from IIT Karakpur was one of the highest, if not the highest. And Professor A.K. Ray was uh, the main person. In fact, um, I was told that many faculty colleagues would run away when they saw Professor A.K. Ray coming because he was trying to convince everybody to get on to NPTEL uh, uh, board. I have that bad reputation. Yeah. Now, but then um, he always wanted to do this pedagogy project. So we wanted to close this session with uh, a presentation on the pedagogy project, which is one of the most important uh, projects in the uh, mission. What I'll try to do in seven minutes, it normally takes me three hours to explain, but what I'll try to explain in seven minutes is the basic concept. It is somewhat different from the other projects in the sense it does not produce any content, it has no content at all. What it is saying, it, I would not say so it does not have any content at all. What it is saying is that any teaching learning before a teacher begins to teach, they must know exactly what they want to achieve from the students. The outcome based learning says that at the end of a course or a class or a module, what exactly should the student be able to tell, do. So, this is what is supposed to be. Class size becoming too large for effective face to face teaching, everybody knows that. Um, a wide variety of, the reason why I put that in, because whenever I say such things, people will say, uh, you know, still classroom teaching is the best. The attitude change is, is the most important part. Wide variety of high quality learning resources becoming available in cyberspace. What I am saying is, content generation is taking place simultaneously everywhere. Today we have heard, and all the time we hear, that various people are generating different kinds of content, very high quality content. If content is available, why should the faculty come and teach in the class? I do not think there is a need for a faculty should come and deliver contents in the class. Flip teaching is what is required. Access to computers and internet becoming easier and cheaper. Teachers need not deliver content in class. Learning to learn, working in groups, ability to collaborate are now recognized as important graduate attributes. Select and set, teach less and learn more. The objective of this project is the a group of faculty would prepare the course objective, they write down the course objective. At the end of the course, what the student should be able to do? Then they write, divide the course into modular structure. This course should be taught in these modules. They write module objectives, they write unit objectives. And for each of those objectives, they will prepare test items that these are the problems, self assessment problems. That if you are able to, if you have learned the course, try these problems. If you have solved the problems by yourself, that means you have learned the course. If you have not, we will come to the class and we will explain the problem. So, a set of original non trivial problems, about 120 such problems, are created and posted. 
And what about teaching and learning? For each objective, the faculty begins by saying, if you go to a NPTEL website, or if you go to a virtual lab site, or if you go to this site, or some MOOC site, what are the available contents which is most suitable for learn that by on your own? Because we are saying, we don't teach, you learn. So, for that purpose, you are listing a set of content, set of references, but not such wide references that it will take 20 hours to read one hour. So, set of most relevant references are given. Set objectives, write down what, where they would be able to find that, and that should be a variety. So, that would suit each student's need, would be suited that. Some people like maybe pictures, some like animation, some like content, some like various kinds of things they put down and a set of problems to see and the problems have also have solutions and finally a two page summary of a one hour lesson. It is not an exhaustive thing, it is a two page summary only. Given that um, it is all of this is done by a group of faculty, two or three faculty make a team and it is available <coughs> on the net. So, that before the class begins, before any before a student takes a course, everything is available. Uh, two appropriate challenging and achievable learning objectives, write them down in clear and measurable terms using standard action verbs. There is a technique for writing, there is a technology of writing this. You cannot write straight away. This Bloom's taxonomy uses a whole range of things are used. Prepare study guides, learning strategies with detailed list of learning resources, text, graphics, websites, simulation, virtual lab, make it available on the website. Uh, develop adequate self-assessment material well matched with learning objectives to allow students to monitor their progress and seek timely help. Provide suitable technology tools to allow students to access learning resources, interact effectively with peers and mentors. Whole thing is available on the net. So, if the objectives are available, people from different kinds of places, different places can form groups using either a tool built in or any other kind of tool from the group. They are encouraged that they go through and learn on their own or as a matter of groups. If they have a problem, they can post a question back to the faculty. Faculty monitor progress, evaluate and provide a timely remedial lessons. External experts, industry to participate. An interesting part of this project is once the course objective, model objective and unit objectives are prepared and put on the site. Anybody can come in from anywhere in the world. It begins a biological circle. That means you prepared something for course objective. Somebody, let's say control systems, somebody teaching a control system somewhere else can post a comment. This would have been a better objective. This would have been a better problem. It continues to improve continuously. Students can do that. Industry can do that. Anybody can do that. And the whole question of one hour, two hour, completely lost, completely gone. Because you have said this is at the end of the course, it is very difficult to explain how to write course objective. We find that we have conducted almost 20 workshops so far. Explaining to faculty how to write course objective is very, very difficult indeed. A course objective is not a list of topics. It is a very different thing altogether. And once you have done that, students learn in chunks. They will see this is a course objective that will be taught in various units. So, they will go to different sites, they will see this I do not like, this one is like, they make their own repertoire of things and that is put take notes. I will show you, I will go through very briefly just to give an idea. Um, external experts, we talk about industry institute collaboration, one of the best way of industry institute collaboration is this. Two minutes, he says, okay, that means I can go fast. Uh, you see, these, all these things have been talked about, active learning, flip teaching, conduct, uh, conduct formative evaluation, fantastic kind of evaluation can be formed. Once you prepare this, the, the, the Akash tablet which is used, I have done with one of my MTEC students, not only would you tell them right or wrong, you will also tell them instantaneously at the end of a one hour class, you can every class with 600 students in the class, you can take a five minute test and give them feedback what they have not understood misconception rather than right or wrong. That is possible. I have done that with my empty students. Uh, I will leave all that. It is a five year final phase of the project. 
200 courses at BTEC level are being talk, uh, developed. Uh, 17 institutions are participating, about 400 to 500 faculty members from IITs and NITs are participating, 300 to 400 reviewers involved, coordination 25 to 30 faculty, 16 pro 3 year project. All courses have been identified, the course has started. We have conducted uh, almost 15, 16 workshops in the last few, few, few months. Uh, web based tool, this has been developed, it's a fantastic tool. It's available to anybody completely free of cost. Kanan is looking at me, so I. That's how it looks finally. Arbitrary cost. This is just a view, you will see. On 2nd of March, when I go to IIT Kharagpur, we will implement that fully. Any student can look at a course, let's say arbitrary course name E302 and institute name, what they would see under overview. If you look at overview, click on C, it is course overview. Student, faculty, teacher, industry, anybody is available, sees course overview, then looks at model overview, sorry, model overview, and similarly course objective, model objective, unit objective, course, model summary, unit summary, references for the course level references, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> uh, that's what Colonel look is doing that to me. <laughs> uh, form groups, take notes, add comments, simulation, virtual labs. If you look at this one, a fantastic teacher training also. You look at this, a faculty has a lecture, let's say lecture number 17, next Tuesday. I come to the class or I go to my home at on Sunday night, I select unit number 17, immediately find overview, objective, summary, reference resources, everything connected to that is available and I put take notes, I prepare my own and it's available to me. This is possible for students or anybody. Uh, the site is ready, uh, massive amount of work is done but unfortunately the biggest problem is getting it done. Uh, the faculty team of two to three who have been teaching for at least three to five years uh, are allowed to take this as a team. It takes 600 to 800 hours to do that. It's a massive amount of work only because we've said 125 course and module level problems have to be generated which are non-trivial and original <coughs> in nature with solutions and that takes a lot of time. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor Ray. If you, uh, let me take a couple of minutes, if you don't mind, uh, to uh, summarize, uh, not uh, what happened now, because these are difficult to summarize, but I want to summarize uh, some of the activities that are happening at IIT Bombay, uh, which are connected with uh, uh, pedagogy. Um, against the common wisdom, uh, <coughs> Professor Fartek started uh, live transmission from uh, this very building. In fact, the IT uh, department uh, was School of IT was started here to do live transmission. And then um, I was the head of uh, this uh, program CD uh, for three years, 2006 to 2009. We transmitted about 5,000 hours of live transmission, live classes as they happened. Um, as Mr. F.C. Kohli said, we shared the mistakes that we made and pedagogy and all kinds of things. So based on this experience, we have also started an education technology program, interdisciplinary program at IIT Bombay, and started with only PhD. So as a matter of fact, uh, it has grown so much, we are not able to, we are saying no to the PhD applicants. We have 20 uh, students. Uh, we are looking for faculty members for this uh, education technology program. We have faculty members uh, from other disciplines participating part-time. We have only one full-time faculty member, Professor Zahana Murthy. Um, based on their input, uh, the student's input, PhD student's input, we are in a position to try out various things. I have tried myself, uh, for example, clickers uh, in my process control course. Uh, I believe that I contacted, a, gave a total of about 150 questions in uh, various lectures and the students come to know immediately. In fact, Professor Fatag used the clickers in the 10,000 teacher training program. That means people give their questions and those are collected in each remote center and FTP'd across 
in a few minutes you get the total in addition to finding out whether people have understood you can also find out if a center is doing badly why is that center doing badly or they do they have good bandwidth do they have good camera are they opening their premises on time all kinds of things there are many things of course you can also find out which students are doing extremely well which students are doing badly do they need help and so on and um, akash was used in this akash was used in my uh, classroom also of course we used uh, flip classroom i have conducted my class uh, digital control for now i am conducting it fifth time using flip classroom and every time i'm learning something new so anyway uh, uh, that was a brief summary because i thought that that was a reason to say that pedagogy uh, is the most important thing that we talked about it is not just the tools that we have we have to learn to use them so we are all uh, in the learning stages uh, uh, so as i mentioned earlier in the afternoon session uh, that is the 415 session hopefully we will get to discuss all of this and come up with uh, recommendations a position paper and uh, recommendations for policy to the government to mhrd and to planning commission so with that i want to thank you for your uh, uh, patient uh, listening now i hand over the mic to professor fat thank you we are already delayed so we will meet after lunch precisely in this place at 230 please have a short lunch <laughs>